السلام علیکم پیس بی اپون یو ٹوڈے ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا گریٹ سیونٹین سینچری انڈائٹنمنٹ تھنکر نون ایز باروک اسپنوزا یو مائٹ بی ونڈرنگ واٹ اسپنوزا ریشنلسٹ انلائٹنمنٹ تھنکر ہیز ٹو ڈو ود اے چینل وچ از ڈیڈیکیٹڈ ٹو دا اسٹڈی آف میڈیبل اسلامک فلاسفی بٹ دا کنیکشن uh would be made very clear in just a few moments and uh, you would be shocked to see how uh related uh, spinoza's metaphysics and spinoza's philosophy is to uh islamic medieval philosophy and our tradition of falsafa so before getting into great detail uh, let me introduce uh, uh spinoza uh, peace and blessings be upon his soul he he was a great uh, uh enlightenment thinker uh a 17th century enlightenment thinker who was born in netherlands and was born into a jewish household but was later excommunicated uh by his community because of his uh, seemingly and apparently heretical ideas uh and he presented a very unique idea uh for the existence of god and a very unique idea of the existence of god uh which even people like einstein and carl sagan uh claim to believe in uh and in this modern world as well many many atheists also claim that they believe in the god of spinoza instead of the god of uh, various uh, monotheistic or polytheistic religions hopefully in uh, future we'll make a detailed video discussing and elaborating uh, spinoza's idea of god and how it relates to islamic philosophy uh, but in this video uh, the primary focus uh, will be a video that was recently made by a very famous uh, philosophy channel then and now and this video was entitled spinoza a complete guide to life in this video uh, there was a specific point that i want to address and which i found to be a little problematic and that was the use of the word nature and uh, pantheism when describing the god of spinoza so people often uh, attribute uh, pantheism to spinoza and claim that he believed that uh, nature is god and uh, uh, nature is what we ought to call god and his conception of uh, uh, god is identical with the nature it is not necessarily wrong to say that uh, spinoza believes that nature is identical to god but uh, one has to understand that what spinoza essentially and actually means by nature and how his usage of these words uh, is is not uh similar or is not identical to how a layman uh, in philosophy or how a layman would understand it so in this video which then and now made they put a great emphasis on how spinoza believes that everything is interconnected and how one thing is sustaining another thing which is essentially correct but i think they put a lot of focus on how spinoza's idea of god is identical to the nature and is not essentially something that transcends uh, this uh, material universe in a way which i clearly think uh, uh, spinoza does not believe in spinoza believes in such a god which in a sense does transcend the material universe and thus transcend the composition of the material universe and this this is the, the point which people often ignore uh, whenever they are talking about spinoza so in this uh, short video we will just re- review a relevant section from the then and now video and i'll try to analyze it and break it down and present some references from the book of uh, books of spinoza primarily ethics as well to show what exactly spinoza is trying to say about the existence of god and what his views actually are about god's existence and nature so let us get started and first uh, watch the relevant section of the then and now video by substance i understand what is in itself and is conceived through itself i e that whose concept doesn't have to be formed out of the concept of something else So let's take a leaf. Is it a substance? Well, it's only a substance if it's in itself, if it's independent, if it's conceived through itself, if it doesn't have to be formed out of something else. But of course it does. 
it's dependent on the branch and the tree. So is the tree a substance? Well, no, because it's formed out of the soil, the air and the birds that disperse its seeds. A substance should be an independent thing, yet thinking through this thought experiment, everything is in some sense determined, dependent, an extension of things outside of it. So if we're defining substances strictly, it turns out there's only one, nature. Trees, people, plants, animals, there, we're all different modes, different shapes of nature, of matter. Yeah, as you can see, the host uses the word matter, that we all are modes of matter. And this is essentially the point where uh, Spinoza would disagree. Spinoza doesn't necessarily believe that we are all modes of matter. And this is very clear if one is to even just read the first part of uh, Spinoza's ethics. The more appropriate word to use here uh, and which should have been used and which Spinoza himself uses in his ethics is existence. We all are modes of existence, not of matter. There could be some immaterial existence as well uh, that are not material, but they could still be modes of uh, matter and they could still be conceived through uh, something else which is apart from matter. So first of all we have to understand what Spinoza essentially uh, means by substance and the definition uh, substance and mode. So and the definition was given uh, in the start of this video as well and I, I can just uh, show it to you as well. Uh, Spinoza by substance he means uh, in, in on the very first page of the ethics that uh, substance is that uh, which can be conceived through another. He says, by substance, I mean that which is in itself and conceived through itself. In other words, that of which a conception can be formed independently of any other conception. So for Spinoza, a substance is something that can be conceived independently, that can be thought of as independent apart from everything else. That is a substance and then he has a mode a mode is that which is conceived only through a substance he says by mode I mean the modifications the affections of substance or that which exists in and is conceived through something other than itself for example if I tell you uh, just to give a very rough example because uh, nothing can be a substance apart from existence itself but if I am to give an example then think of uh, a triangle right a triangle triangle in its very own nature is something that is composite, right? So you cannot think of a triangle, right, without thinking of a line, without thinking of angles, without thinking of three, right? So a triangle by its very own definition is a mode and it's a mode of something which is even more fundamental which is even more basic and that is angle and uh, that is uh, you know a line so for Spinoza a thing is either conceived in itself or it is conceived through something else because of something else if that thing is conceived in itself then it is a substance and if it can if it is conceived through something else because of something else then uh, it, it, it is a mood and anything that is composite by definition can be conceived through its parts and its existence is its very own existence is the existence of its parts right so for Spinoza obviously he would not agree that matter is a substance because matter obviously because it is composite by nature by movement it is a uh, composition of potentiality and actuality it is a composite it has a limitation and obviously Spinoza 
uh, does not believe that uh, uh, the substance can have any kind of limitation it can have any form of uh, uh, shape or size because for knows other substances uh, eternal and it is infinite and it is absolutely independent so to say that Spinoza believes that matter is the substance or universe is God is absolutely wrong this is not what Spinoza believes in and if we are to read his ethics and his definition of God he clearly puts it out he says that by God I mean a being absolutely infinite that is a substance consisting of infinite attributes of which each expresses eternal and infinite essentiality explanation I absolutely I say absolutely infinite not finite after its kind for a thing infinite only after its kind uh, infinite attributes may be denied to it but that which is absolutely infinite contain in its essence whatever expresses reality and involves no negation so what he's trying to say is that god is identical to the reality of existence to the very being to the very reality of existence to what we even mean by existence at the first place and this is exactly identical to the ideas of uh, people uh, Islamic existentialists like Mullah Sadra or uh, uh, Ibn Arabi this is exactly what they are saying that God is identical to the reality of existence to haqiqatul wujud so even though then and now is a very good channel but i think at this point uh, they are trying to portray as if spinoza is a pantheist or spinoza believes that the universe is god or spinoza believes that matter is god but that is not the case spinoza believes that existence qua existence existence in its own reality is God and it is what we ought to call God and whatever takes us to the perfection of existence coexistence is good and whatever takes us away from it is bad so let us watch the rest of the video and then I'll present some concluding thoughts as well Spinoza saw nature as God in fact he usually wrote God or nature they're one and the same thing why is this well he thought of it like this. God is meant to be this infinite, all-powerful, omnipresent, omniscient lawmaker and lawgiver. But if that's the case, he can't be outside of nature. If he's not just part of nature, if he's not everywhere at once, he can't be omnipresent, he can't be infinite. He must, to be those things, be part of everything with nothing inseparable from him, or her, or it. God couldn't be outside the universe, Spinoza realised. He was the universe. The ultimate laws were gravity, mathematics, the laws of physics, of cause and effect. So God, knowing all, seeing all, controlling all, had to not just be part of those laws, but actually be those laws, as if they were an extension of itself. Today, this is called pantheism. As you can see that uh, this this is a great and gross misrepresentation of uh, Spinoza's arguments. Spinoza clearly, very clearly, as he says in his own ethics, he does not believe that there is an identity relation between the modes and the substance. The substance is not identical to the mode and the substance is not identical to the universe. The substance, the primary substance is identical to the nature of existence, to the reality of existence, to the existence, qua existence. And this is exactly the view of Wahdatul uh, Wujud uh, as well, that existence in its own reality is absolutely simple truly infinite and has all perfections in its own self and uh, Spinoza is essentially saying this as well and if one is to read his uh, ethics uh, and read the very first part of the ethics you can clearly see it and uh, he says that in proposition 4 that two uh, or more distinct things are distinguished uh, one from one from the other either by difference of the attributes or of the substance or by the difference of their modifications everything which exists 
exists e exists either in itself or in something else. That is, nothing is granted in addition to the understanding except substance and its modification. Nothing is therefore given besides the understanding by which several things may be distinguished from one the other except the substance or in other words their attributes and modification. So what he is essentially saying is that either something is a substance or something is the more of that substance. Either something exists in its own self, something is the reality of existence, something is the necessary existence, something is the independent existence or that thing is the effect of, an, of the independent existence. It is the modification of that substance. And I would claim that this idea which came to Spinoza is not necessarily something he discovered or came to on his own because this very same idea, uh, the the idea of necessitarianism that he has or the idea of the primary existence and the fundamental necessary existence, this very same idea is presented by the great medieval Islamic philosopher Avicenna as well and he has brilliantly explained his in his book uh, The Metaphysics of the Healing and there was a student of Avicenna who was named Ibn Tufayl and Ibn Tufayl also wrote a book which is called Hayy ibn Yaqzan which is about a person who is just spontaneously created in a deserted island in, and using his very own reason and the basic axioms of logic he reaches the very same conclusion that a necessary existence exists and everything else is the mode of the necessary existence uh, just through reasoning and just by using Avicenna's argument and Ibn Tufayl explains Avicenna's argument in Hayy ibn Yaqzan as well. And guess what? We have clear evidence that Spinoza had read Hayy ibn Yaqzan and had asked a friend of his to translate it into Dutch as well. So we have evidence that Spinoza had read Hayy ibn Yaqzan, which is very similar, if not identical, to his own philosophy. So I think we have a clear case of at least an inspiration from Islamic medieval philosophy and we can see that how fundamentally uh, Islamic medieval philosophy and the thought of Avicenna and uh, our other uh, thinkers has affected uh, Spinoza and how he came to these very uh, same conclusions as well and New York Times and The Guardian both have written articles on this as well on the great influence of uh, Islamic philosophers and I think that this this is something which is not uh, studied or, or uh, thought about in the Western academia and we people often present uh, it to be the case that as if uh, Spinoza's God is fundamentally different from the God of uh, uh, Islam but that, no that is not the case for majority of Muslims especially the uh, elite of the Muslims, the God of for the God for them, the Allah, uh, is identical to the God that Spinoza is explaining in the first part of the ethics. Yeah, in the other parts, in the later parts, we can have some disagreement about how to derive morality or uh, what is the uh, nature of prayer. But the God that he is describing in its own self is actually an exactly identical to the God of Ibn Arabi, to the God of uh, Avicenna, to the God of uh, Mullah Sadra and to the God of Ismaili thinkers, Nasir Khusro and so on and so forth. So I think that it is time that West uh, acknowledges this influence on Spinoza and tries to read him uh, under an Islamic lens as well and I think it would be very beneficial and it would really uh, stop this appropriation and misunderstanding of Spinoza's thought that many people, even even scholars uh, in the West, people who have PhDs in philosophies, uh, philosophy uh, seem to have. So I, I think and I'm hopeful that uh, this video uh, has been helpful to you and this uh, uh, video opens up a new path into understanding Spinoza's philosophy. I thank you very much for sticking by. This, this video took uh, quite some effort Effort. So I ask you to please uh, share your thoughts, to like it and uh, subscribe it. Uh, until next time, ma'asalama. Thank you very much. Zakallah. Wa ma'alina illa al-balaq al-mubin.